Alright folks, here we are, right back live with the shaman, and as always we're going to start out with a little bit of an introduction, we have uh, Discord apps pulled up, if you want to click the invite in the description area on the right, you can join us in vocal chat, I know that I'm on and Cindy is on this morning. Of course, I can't see Discord, so I don't know if anybody else is on. But um, you'll notice on the right-hand side of the screen in Facebook and on the bottom of the screen in YouTube is the description, the links, the invite, the music link where we get our music, and our Flickr page for Open Pagan Church. <clears throat> Our topic today is sharing the wisdom. And there, there's going to kind of be two sides to this. One of those is One of those is the sharing of the wisdom, and the other side is the sharing of the wisdom to those who don't care. Now, as always, um, Live with the Shaman is an adult channel. We do periodically use unkid-friendly language and unkid-friendly conversations. Well, today, this is probably a kid-friendly conversation with some not-so-kid-friendly language because I have a very strong opinion when people ask me questions about our shamanic philosophy, um, about the Grove of the Celtic Shaman, and they ask for me to explain what paganism is, what shamanism is. And then they want to set out and proceed to tell me that's wrong. So the topic of sharing the wisdom kinda has a catch-22 situation to it, if you will. In many cultures, and not just today, but since the beginning, people will ask you to explain something or describe something, and then they want to set out and proceed to tell you just how damn well wrong you are. And just for giggles sake, um, you see the little puff ball down here, just below uh, my face? That is my microphone. Um, no, I'm not playing with a rabbit's foot. That is my microphone. <laughs> Put your lucky rabbit on it. No. no. And looks like we got uh, a couple of more that have joined us. That's good. Feel free to ask your questions. Feel free to click the Discord invite. Hey, Sean. And um, feel free to join us in Talkie Talkie, if you will. So sharing of the wisdom. Now, Grove of the Celtic Shaman has always been uh, built around and supported the philosophy that the sharing of wisdom is the way one learns themselves. And we teach our students, as time goes on, that you don't walk into someone's house and just start going blah, blah, blah about who and what you are. Uh, if people want to know, they'll ask or not. Now, if someone comes into your house and you are doing things that may be shamanic re shamanically related or path specific related 
in your home, well, quite frankly, if they don't like the way you do things in your home, they can piss off. They can bugger off. Or whatever you want to call it. So the sharing of wisdom is a double-edged sword. You want to know when to and when not to share that wisdom. And it's like I posted in... And if they, go ahead. And if they understand wisdom... Say again. Explain. Um, you can share your wisdom, but will they understand it if they don't understand what wisdom is? Well, my thought is if you don't get it, ask. I don't understand. Um, and then we can start a dialogue. We can we can start a conversation. And right. You know, it's like I, I posted over in the description area. We see all over the internet, uh, especially in the last 10 or 15 years, you see all over the internet where teachers of Celtic shamanism are popping up like weeds in a flower, in a flower bed. Um, huh? Hang on a sec. Hang on. Sean, you there? He's on Discord. I don't know if Mike's working. All right. Well, Sean, if you can hear us. Ah, wait, wait. Oh, here. Come on. A little louder. Can you hear me? Barely. Oh, yeah. Barely. Uh, put the gain up on the mic, on his mic, Sean. I can't. I've got desktop gain turned up as loud as it'll go. And what about on Discord? Hell, I don't know. Right click on his name and then you'll see user volume. User volume, look at there. Alright, Sean, say something now. Well, I turned him up and he went quiet. <laughs> oh well, let's go on. Maybe he didn't want to be turned up. <laughs> Right, okay, so we'll continue on. So the sharing of wisdom and, and the Grove of the Guilty Shaman has always been a relatively open yeah. circle. Hey, what? I guess you gained at 112%, dude. There's 137. I'm on the earbuds. Can you hear me, Tom? No. I hear you okay, but he doesn't. I mean, I can make you okay. out. You know, I can make out what you're saying. But the desktop game's not picking you up at all. Well, you can listen and go, uh... How about now? Yeah, I've got you turned up all the way, dude. Alright, I'm working on it. That's alright, that's cool. So, one of the things you run into with sharing wisdom, you run into the differences of personalities, different philosophies, different idealisms. You run in, you can run into issues with different forms of your own path, Celtic shamanism being one of them. Now I posted uh, last week in the Open GCS group on Facebook a link to a woman that's going to be putting on a live seminar for her breed or her philosophy of Celtic shamanism. I did watch a couple of her videos. I have looked at her web page. I found her quite interesting. I see a lot of her parallels to ours. 
and I see a lot of her differences to ours. And one of the things that everybody needs to understand that watch our videos on a regular basis, we're not always right for everyone. We've never said that. In fact, quite the opposite. Not everyone is right for everyone. So it's really kind of good that you have a variable of choices. One of the things I've seen in a lot of um, and, and nothing bad about the witches because I know we have plenty of brothers and sisters that are witches and druids and other forms. But many of the witch covens and groups that I've met, they don't allow their students to step outside of the tradition to learn elsewhere or to go elsewhere. They're pretty well sequestered. And that's okay if that's your thing. I've even known some shaman practitioners that will take one student at a time and in the ancestors in the ancient days when a shaman took a student that was a lifetime student. It was one student, one lifetime, that was it. Essentially what the shaman did, either male or female, would take one student and they would train that student from as young as possible on up until the day they die and then when they die they would hand their staff over to the new shaman you were an apprentice until that time happened well in modern times here in 2019 at the time of this broadcast uh, we typically don't do things that way uh, number one the population is too damn big the internet is too damn big and we do we do still have people come to us want us to do remote training and we'll give it a shot it doesn't work most of the time and a lot of times people in remote training they get a little tired of not being able to experience the energies up close and as time has gone on, many of us don't have a place to hold physical circle to do hand-in-hand -hand teaching. Now, if anybody in Discord or anything uh, have something they want to want to add, just speak up by all means. Okay. Yeah, here. Alright, Sean, speak now. Boy, uh, can you hear me now? Alright, I turned, uh, I've got you turned as high as you can go, bro. Um, Sean, you've been a solitary, pretty much solitary practitioner since we've known you, and that's been kind of a long time. What is your thoughts, yeah. um, what are your thoughts on sharing wisdom? If you don't share it, you lose it. Agreed. That's one of the one of the things we've always gotten along on, you know. We we have different ways of doing things. But at the end of the day it all comes back to the same thing. We're just doing what we do to get to our end's goal, right? Something like that. Not used to you being this quiet. Where do you go? Oops. I don't know. He poofed. Yep. Hey, Cindy, I've got Sean turned up so much you're going to need to back off your mic a little bit. 
Or actually, you go ahead and talk and I'll turn you down here. <laughs> okay, how was that? Okay. Oh, oh, so, sharing wisdom? Hmm. I try to. I have few people around, like the Liberty Group. I try and help that with Clint and his doing the wisdom sharing. Was that enough? Yeah, uh, Sean had to flip over to Facebook apparently. Discord was yep. tripping him up a little bit there. I understand him. Alright, so when we're... I mean, we, we could sit all day and talk about the different ways of sharing wisdom. But what about receiving shared wisdom have we have we ever found ourselves in a position or in a situation where people are wanting to share wisdom with us and we're just really not wanting to hear it <laughs> that's yes Cindy when yes. when have you run into that Well, the one time we were in circle and the, the orb person came in. Oh, you're talking about the, the white lighter. Yeah, the white lighter. Yeah. There's certain people that say, like, if they come in and they say what they are, but you know what you got to be proved from you. You know, like if someone wants their wisdom to share it all, they got to talk a bit before I want to the wisdom from him, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like this guy was a healer came into our group in Liberty and he does uh, Reiki and stuff. Well, he wanted to start sharing his wisdom and stuff. And I told him, well, how long you been in wisdom? How long you been in the Reiki? Um, you know, he got, we got another guy and we let him in the group. So he was sharing his wisdom on that. Well, see, and it's also the way they come across, right? Um, I'm I'm the type of person that I'm the type of person that if you know if somebody has something to say and they're not talking rhetoric and crap. Yeah, John goes. Wisdom is uh, is only there after you get to past the bullshit. Right, you know, and that, that's one of the things I was going to say is sometimes I'll sit there and let them spout their rhetoric for a bit. I mean, come on, guys. I've got rhetoric. Sean's got rhetoric. Cindy's got rhetoric. Everybody that watches our channel in one way or another has rhetoric of some kind. Why am I winking? Am I winking? You're... Yeah, your right eye keeps blinking and not your... Really? I didn't yep. know that. I've never been able to wink my right eye. I can wink my left eye. But I've never quite been able to wink my... Well, anyway. <laughs> it does it by itself. I guess. So, once you let someone spout their rhetoric, And you're listening because somewhere in that rhetoric is going to be who and what they are. Generally. And Chen <laughs> Chong said, no, I don't. I'm truth. <clears throat> right. Go, Sean. Okay, I've got a question, Sean. If you come up to a guy and he shows he's a vampire... What do you do? Do you listen to him or you just say, uh, he's bullshit? What? That's what I was saying. I met a guy that says he's a vampire. Oh. And you listen for a while and you still think he's bullshit. But when. Do you listen to him just because he says he's a vampire? 
Well, I'm of the belief, and this is just me personally, I'm of the belief that someone says they worship the rock as a god. Okay, well if you want to worship the rock as a god, that's fine. As long as, <coughs> excuse me, as long as your expectations are not that I am going to follow you like, um, like a sheep. Good morning, Sabrina. And you know, there's a part of me that agrees with Sean, tell him to suck it. But there's a bigger part of me, having been with. having been with the pagan group for a long time and then my experiences prior I have been told enough times that my belief, my philosophies and my ideologies are bullshit and okay maybe they are to you but they're not to me So if somebody asks me what color I think the wall is and I tell them what color I think the wall is and they tell me, no, you're full of shit. Well, if you'd already made up your mind, I'm full of shit. Why did you ask me? So the sharing of wisdom is, is a, sharing of wisdom is a two-way street. You have to be willing to share it without being a jackass or a know-it-all. But you also have to be able to listen to others sharing of their wisdom. Stroke bullshit. Stroke whatever. So having set in on vampiric coven ideology, me personally, if someone walked up and said that their path is vam vampiric or vampire, I would be, okay, what does that mean to you? I know there are multiple different types of vampiric covens. Um, there are some, um, there are some that say, they're blood drinkers. Well, okay. But my next question would have to be, what about, how do you handle the part where drinking human blood is poisonous to the human body? The shit will kill you. And that is a medically proven fact. John says, hear and feel their truth and make your own determination on what they say. Agree. Absolutely. You know, we, we all have um, we all have a bullshit meter and y'all heard me talk before about my bullshit meter. Um, I'm going to call him or get to him and see if he do an uh, interview for you. That would be cool. Um, I, I would like to have that interview on Open Pagan Church. I think that would be by far the best forum because Open Pagan Church, I want to introduce people to alternative paths, but I damn sure don't want to be the one that's speaking on those alternative paths when I know jack shit about them. Make sense? But I want, yep, it does. I want to talk to the individual prior to doing an interview. I want to make sure that they're not a TV vampire. You know? Right. I'll get with them. Yeah. You know, if, if I hear them say I never go out in the sun because I may sparkle and break... 
No, not that way. He's the lead of the Vampire Court in Houston. Oh, all right. Well, I also realize there'll be some things he can't talk about because he's on the Vampire Vampiric Court. Um, I've heard of him. I've never researched him. That's kind of cool. Uh, I think it would be a good interview. And we've known people that uh, practice psychic vampirism. Uh, those are interesting people. The um, the shop that we used to all go to in Lake Charles, Louisiana, Rick and uh, Patrick's shop. They did. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they did the. Um, the <laughs> Sabrina said Twilight Vampire. Ooh. Um, <laughs> they did the uh, workshop with the. Lady and the Lord of the Vampiric Coven in Louisiana. That was fascinating. And they practiced psychic vampirism. And they would occasionally take a tablespoon of blood during a ritual of some sort. Um, Sean says, how old did he say he was? LOL. <laughs> Is that for me or you? Oh no, it, it would be for you because I don't personally know any vampire fire He is in his thirties. Thirties or forties. Mm -hmm. So, you know, <clears throat> that is a good example. You know, especially for the younger generation that uh, are the newcomers to the shaman philosophy that might be watching our broadcast uh, pre-recorded on our share channels is in the sharing of wisdom you have to be willing to listen and you have to be willing to listen to someone all the way through right not just pick snippets of their conversation and pick you don't want to nitpick their conversation. You want to actually listen to them all the way through. Make your determination. Ask. Come on, guys. Ask responsible questions. You know, realistically. Um. Yes, um, that was the video that we did of that vampiric coven uh, Sabrina is talking about. And um, we actually did watch the video on that. Damn, I don't know whatever happened to that video. But anyway, that was but years ago. A long time ago. Anyway. Anyway, onward. We're yeah. sharing the wisdom. Sharing the wisdom. Conversation done. Have a nice day. No, I'm just kidding. When people come in, they have to learn how. You know, to in in my ideology, and some may disagree with with this. Not that that ever has ever happened before. But in my ideology of wisdom, you have education and you have experience. And together that education and experience forms wisdom. Education is what you learn from books, listening to others, doing research, reading, watching, listening talking. Education is something that you are taught. Experience is things that you have done, that you've lived through, that you've experienced yourself firsthand. So your combined experience with education gives way to wisdom. 
the wisdom is the understanding of the combination of the two. Some people call it life experiences gives you wisdom. Um, I've heard some people say the older you get the wiser you get. Well that's not always true. I've known some people the older they got the stupider they got. Yeah, but we won't go down that rabbit hole. So gaining wisdom is the combination if and let's look at it this way if the gaining of wisdom is through the understanding of education and experience life experiences we learn as we go how to and how not to share that wisdom So let's put ourselves in a metaphorical situation, shall we? Let's put this into play. The scenario being, you've been invited by a good friend to their Pentecostal church. Now, y'all go with me on this. Alright? Before you start sending metaphysical to my course, smack me upside the head with it. No, we wouldn't do that. Aye, right. You've been invited by a good friend to their Pentecostal church. Known this person forever. They've been, even though they're Pentecostal. Now, now, now we know how unwavering some of those folk can be. They're worse than some Baptist. Oh, did I say that out loud? Um, so, you go. And I say this because I've done it in the past. Um, I went more than once because my intrigue in the vocal ideology of these people on a sociological, psychological level fascinated the hell out of me. And I was, what, in my thirties probably? when I went and I sit and I listened and of course I sit in the back pew um, and I was welcomed by the preacher he asked a few pointed questions and I gave him a few very respectful pointed answers he said well you're welcome Maybe you'll find your way to God by coming here. And I thought, I already have. I just brought the goddess with him. But anyway, I digress. So the sharing of that wisdom, being shaman, being psychoanalytic anyway, and studying a study of human nature, which shamans are, we, we almost have to be to be able to do our shaman stuff I said not just one Sunday not just two Sundays but three Sundays in a row because the interesting part of the sociology and psychology of it the preacher of this church had to be able to maintain their attention. And I thought, you know, that makes perfect sense. In order to initiate 
people and instigate people, you have to know a good bit about psychology and sociology. You have to understand how the social animal of the human interacts with other like-minded social uh, animals of the human within their circle. And as we begin to form the Open Pagan Church and live with our, the, the Grove of the Celtic Shaman, I understood that. You have to know how to get people interested in the topic you're talking about. Spirit, spirit guides, God and goddess, triad, whatever, can give you the idea, can give you the topic, and it comes from all sources. Something I read over the internet, one of the members of the group. Uh, Lucy, as of late, has really come up with some really good topics. Um, but if I'm doing the church, or if I'm doing the presentation, whether it's Live with the Shaman or Open Pagan Church, I have to be able to respectfully use my education, my experience, my wisdom, to be able to speak on that topic. Miss Cindy is the same way. Being one of the masters of the grove, uh, Sean would be the same way being a shaman master of himself. If he was to do a video topic now, that would be one I would like to see. Hint, hint. Hint, hint, Sean! Um, I would love to watch a video presentation that Sean does here on Live with the Shaman. Uh, hell, I'm not the only shaman out there. All we got to do is organize it and bang, there you go. Um, same goes with Cindy and Sabrina and anyone else who actually has a viable shaman topic they want to go over. Let's talk. Let's discuss it. Make sure you've got the right uh, facilities and hardware to do a broadcast number one because the last thing you want to do is try to do a broadcast and I've done them over cell phone before I promise they're not easy to do yep you gotta have like a line out or something or you go blank yeah yeah um, I found by far the easiest way is to set the set the computer up with webcams and software and all this. But the sharing of wisdom, I, it, it's not just talking. The sharing of wisdom is not just talking like we're doing here. What are some of the other ways to share? A topic to share wisdom write it down share it in writing a blog uh, something like that okay for the longest time yeah Sabrina says speaking in that you used to do long time have conferences or something with Um, Sean said, give me time, no internet. Coming to a theater near you, he said. Well, see, one of the things that I used to do, and I know Cindy remembers this, and I know Sabrina does too, Sean might. When we first started out, I did a boatload of daily thoughts, daily ideas. Um, I'd be driving down the road. Huh? I miss that. Yeah. I'd be driving down the road and come up with a occasionally brilliant idea and just reach up and hit record and then when I got home well I would boy that was a pain in the ass but I would upload it convert it and then post it on YouTube 
a lot of those videos are still there. The and and a lot of us go back and look at it. Yeah, my self included. Sometimes I get a giggle out of my old self. Um. So I mean, if we think about it, and I kind of want to, kind of want to pull it down, kind of pull to a close. The sharing of the wisdom is in multiple different ways. But one of the biggest things I wanted to say on sharing of wisdom is congruency. Some of you may not know what the word congruency means, but it's walking the talk. Being who and what you say you are. I mean, we were talking about churches earlier. One of the Baptist churches I went to, the preacher was standing up there talking about the evils of makeup and jewelry and the evils of money and how people should give more of their money to the church. His wife was driving a Porsche. She had on more makeup than anybody would be able to chisel off. So be congruent. Walk the talk. Share wisdom through your actions. Uh, people sometimes at work ask me how, how I maintain my temper dealing with some of the people I have to deal with. I just simply tell them I breathe a lot. To the point of hyperventilating sometimes. But most of the time, I just remember. I'm not the cause of their anxieties. I do not want to perpetuate those anxieties. So, if I portray wisdom, and I handle situations with wisdom, the situations generally come out quite a bit better than they could have done had I handled it with the portrayed anger and disrespect that was portrayed upon me. So one of the biggest ways to share wisdom is to walk the talk. Be who and what you say you are and live within the manner in which you say you will live. Sharing of wisdom is not just uh, getting in front of the people and talking or doing a blog and posting or posting on Facebook in hopes that someone else will read it or watch it. People watch how you live. They watch what you do. They watch what you don't do. And what's funny as hell as I find the don't do's get you in more trouble than the do do's. If that makes any sense. Somewhere along the line. Yeah. So look. We made it another day. Live with a shaman. If anybody has any good topics they want to do on their own video. Let us know. We'll schedule it. We'll set it up. If you have anything you want to discuss in Discord. You have a topic that you want to talk about, but you don't want to be on video. Uh, let me know. We'll set it up. We'll work it out. As it were, be sure and click the like button. Or don't. Make a comment. Or don't. Anybody have anything else they want to offer? Don't you don't. Nope. And wisdom is learned if you ask questions too. So I like that. Absolutely. You absolutely learn wisdom through asking questions. All right. Have, well, a, hmm? have a good one. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Have a great day, and we'll see you right here on Live with the Shaman.